Hey everybody, uh, I just want to do a alcohol inks tutorial, um, show some little things that I've discovered along the way uh, that I haven't seen in other videos, and um, I don't know, maybe help somebody out there. So when I first started doing it, I went on YouTube and I looked at a bunch of videos, and it seemed like all of them use the exact same process and end up making the exact same things, which they're not bad, uh, but I think they're kind of juvenile. Um, you, you know, usually just big blobs of color and they swirl it around a little. And this is pretty much what you end up with, you know, stuff like this. Which is cool and everything when you first get into it, but I wanted more. I wanted to be able to do tighter textures um, and just really bring out the. Uh, some of these nice little things that you see down here I wanted to do in larger areas. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually walk through the entire process of doing a tile from start to finish, um, show you the tools that I use, the techniques that I use, and we'll see what happens. If it turns out horrible, uh, I apologize. Okay, the first thing I do um, if you go and you watch videos, most of the tutorials, they just take the inks and they'll just put drops on here, maybe draw some squiggles, stuff like that. Um, and then they'll grab another color and do the same thing again. And that's how you end up with those tiles that I just showed you. And... Um, the technique that I've been using, let me sh show you that real quick, just so you know what I'm talking about. This is a more recent tile that I've done. And if you get really close in there, I don't know if my camera's going to focus, um, but there's just so much more going on. And I guess I used the word juvenile earlier. It looks less juvenile to me. Um, here's another one with a bunch of colors. And... Uh, I tend to work in layers and build things up. Um, here's a brown one. And they just, you know, when you go from this to this, it's quite a jump. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do, is this kind of stuff. Um, and these are these are all four by four tiles. I also use bigger ones. Uh, this is an eight by four, approximately. Uh, this is using orange and turquoise. And I know the colors on my camera um, aren't so great. This camera actually doesn't have a white balance on it, so I can't calibrate it. Um, here's another one. Just tons of detail going on in there. Um, okay, so we've got this tile down, and the way that I actually use the inks is uh, Tim Holtz puts out a bunch of alcohol ink related uh, products, and one of them is this little, it's like a rubber stamp with Velcro on it, and they sell these uh, cotton pads that you put on here. I found that I actually prefer to cut my own out of felt and use felt. Um, it doesn't leave as many hairs behind uh, because as the alcohol inks dry they actually get a little tacky and it'll pull fibers out of here and leave it on your uh, your tile. Um, the cotton ones seem to be worse at that than the, uh, the felt. So I use the felt. Um, it's also cheaper just to buy eight and a half by eleven felt and cut it yourself. And I think probably the biggest difference between the original um, tiles I showed and the, the second set is that I actually apply the ink to this instead of the tile. And I'll just put some dots in here. I'll go back and grab my other color. Put some more dots in here. And now when you stamp, you 
you get tons of little tiny bits of color instead of big huge blobs and you can mix the two you can do you know some with the stamp and some with uh, drips um, you can also do stuff uh, this one might not be a good one to show you on but if you just put a line of ink right along this edge and stamp just with that edge you can actually get lines. You don't have a whole lot of control over how much they spread and stuff. <clears throat> but if you, you know, blow on the uh, tile to help it dry out, um, let the whole thing dry and then go back and do your lines, um, they don't spread nearly as much as this is. And you might notice this tile, I'm not sure why some do it and some don't, but this one's actually repelling the alcohol ink. And I wipe them all off before I, I use them. Um, but I can show you how to go in and fix that, because it's infuriating. This one's actually really bad. Sometimes you just got to throw the tile away. Um, unless you like the white. So we'll come back to this one. And you'll notice I'm not even using any blending solution. Um, you can, but I find when you're doing these little tiny dots of color, having the blending solution on there makes them bleed together faster and you end up with a muddy mess much sooner than if you don't use the solution. And I've been into alcohol inks for, I don't know, probably two months maybe. So I guess in the grand scheme of things, I'm still pretty new at it. Now we'll go in and clean up some of the... Uh, those little white areas that I was talking about. And the way that I do that is use a Q-tip, put some ink on it. You don't really want a ton of ink. You just want enough that you can go in and just kind of smear this around. And what you can do is uh, by blowing on it, you know, it'll dry really quick because you're not putting much ink at all. And then you can go back and add more on top to darken it up a little bit. And one thing you always want to make sure you do when you're doing these is take a Q-tip and uh, just run around the edges and make sure that your ink goes all the way to the edge because it just gives it a nice finished, looked, finished look when you're done. And I can't see the camera at the moment, so I don't know how this looks on screen um, as far as... Oops, got a little much on there. As far as how much uh, that's darkening those spots. Um, but in person, it's... It's pretty close to white, but there's enough color there that it's not super bright white.
so it blends in with everything. So that's the process I use and then we can still go back and if we want to add some of those really small tight circles in here we can just put some dots and then just very lightly and quickly just kind of touch it here and there. And I usually do this in about three cycles because every time you do it, the patterns are going to get tighter. If you hear the water running in the background, that's the uh, fish tanks. So there we go, that's uh, basically the process that I use. And you'll see down, down here in this corner, um, we've got that really tight patterning. And uh, to do ones like this, I just did it all over the place uh, with several different colors. And there's pro uh, probably three or four uh, trips across with different colors um, on the stamper. Um, so there's a flower one. And let's see. Now the way that I finish these is I spray them with uh, polyurethane in a spray. And you want to put something under it so that it's held up. Um, off the surface that you're that you've got it sitting on. Uh, I just use little blocks of wood or whatever um, Just so that the polyurethane can get on the edges and stuff and it won't make this stick to You know trash bag or whatever you lay down underneath it um, And as far as uh, once you have it clear coated I take a giant sharpie and after it's clear coated, just go around with the Sharpie and blacken the edges. And it really doesn't matter what color the tile is. I always do this because it makes it look finished. So you don't just have raw tile on the sides. And usually, I'll have to go all the way around twice. And I think these big fat markers are about four bucks at art stores. And you can see that that looks a lot better than that. So always finish your tiles. And I was going to show you a couple other things that I've done with alcohol inks. Um, this is on a uh, white gessoed oh, I forget what it's called. It's an artboard. Um, Masonite, um, but this is just alcohol inks, and for this one I basically just applied some red, used a Q-tip to streak it across, added some orange, Q-tip across, added some, uh, you know, some more oranges and reds and yellows, and just worked my way down. And when I got down here, um, I blew on it as it was forming that border like this, 
uh, when it starts to, when the the next layer starts to hit the dry stuff, it'll create that dark line. And um, so as this was starting to get right before it got to that phase, I just blew on it this way a little bit, just very gently to get the little trees in the background. And then again, when I jump down to the purple and red uh, to get some little trees and stuff along that line there. Um, but yeah, art, artboard is great for that. That was my first time using it with the alcohol inks. And then uh, once again, I'm going to spray this with uh, a high gloss polyurethane just to protect it. It doesn't have that on it now. I was at uh, Joanne Fabrics the other day and they had clearance picture frames. So I got 10 of them for 21 bucks, which was a pretty good deal. So for these, I actually just take the frame apart, pull out the glass, and I do the image in reverse on the glass. And alcohol inks work great on it. And then I take the, uh, the piece of paper that comes in the frame that says the size and all that and has a stupid sample picture. I just flip that over and it gives a solid white background um, so that once the light goes in, hits the white, bounces back out, um, it'll uh, really light up your the pigments in the uh, alcohol inks and make for some very vibrant um, images. But that's just a, just a landscape. You can do abstracts. Um, sort of like flowers or something um, and this was pretty much all uh, magenta and I think I had a little bit of black in there um, but it just gives some great um, it's not going to focus but um, get a lot of texture and stuff in there there's another abstract um, still haven't decided if I like it better vertical or horizontal. Um, but this was oranges, greens, uh, a little bit of red, black, and you can almost see these chunks. That's where I stamped. And I just went down and just built it up in layers. And the, the black lines and the red next to it were made, and I think this little section here was made with that technique of only putting ink on the edge and then stamping just with the edge. And it'll spread out a little bit because um, alcohol inks are not about control. But um, <laughs> And since the uh, those were all just with white paper and I figured I would try printing out images. Um, so I found this tree and um, just printed that out on white paper. It's just a black tree, white paper. Uh, I did take it into um, Illustrator and I faded out the bottom of the tree and then printed it out and then just did my browns and oranges and some green. And uh, it's pretty cool because you can have really sharp, detailed line work and stuff um, on your paper. And this uh, this robot, this one's pretty wild. It's uh, found an image of a vintage toy robot online, and uh, let me close this up. I just printed it out in black and white, and uh, cut him out. In the background is a blue sheet of holographic paper that I got from uh, Joanne Fabrics, and then I just painted the back of the glass, and I did uh, reds in here. And I think this was uh, reds and greens. And then there's the blue paper behind it. And you just get some really cool oil slick looking effects with the paper. Um, but I've actually, uh, I'm, I'm planning on doing a series of these. Because I really like the way that one turned out. Here's another one where I printed the robot out in color. Uh, used a brownish, copperish uh, 
holographic paper in the back and then did alcohol inks on the back of the glass and I actually did the whole thing in yellow first uh, just to tone him down some and uh, came out pretty cool so there's some other ideas for you uh, you're not limited to just doing ceramic tiles um, but I hope this video has been helpful and have a good day